I am Ruben Thomas. I am a bioinformatics researcher and Core D of the Superfund Research Program here at the University of California, Berkeley. Today, I'm going to talk to you about leukemogens. Leukemogens are a class of chemicals known to cause cancer in, in the blood cells of humans. Specifically, I will be talking about benzene. Benzene occurs naturally in crude oil, and we are all probably getting a whiff of it whenever we fill up our gas tanks. Google Maps would serve as a good analogy of how we are trying to understand the molecular responses of benzene exposure. A bird's eye view of Berkeley in California, or in our case, of benzene responses, is done in the context of other leukemogens. A finer, ground-level view of benzene responses is done in terms of the characterization of the dose-dependent responses of gene expression and blood cell-based responses. So let's see what a bird's eye view of benzene exposure looks like. There, the green arrow shows where benzene is in that map. These uh, responses had enough information to allow us to distinguish a leukemogen from a non-leukemogen, though not perfectly. Of course, this is promising. Promising in the context of environmental health, where one is concerned about screening chemicals for their ability to cause leukemia. Next, for a finer ground level view, in terms of trying to understand the level of responses at given levels of benzene exposure, we turn to benzene and the China study in particular. The China study is a study where of occupationally exposed workers in China who were exposed to a range of benzene levels. We measured the gene expression levels in over 20,000 genes in the blood of these subjects. The changes we saw in these genes corresponded to changes in several biological processes, or biological pathways, as this slide says. Of particular interest to us was the changes we saw in the pathway associated with acute myeloid leukemia. We next asked ourselves, can we characterize the responses in the acute myeloid leukemia pathway? We used data adaptive semi-parametric approaches to estimate two main responses of the genes in the leukemia pathway. The x-axis in both these plots correspond to the exposure of benzene in, one, in parts per million. The y-axis is in terms of the responses of the genes in the pathway. The red line is the mean response of the genes with increasing exposure of benzene. What should be clear to you from looking at either of the plots is we are observing responses in the leukemia pathway genes at levels below one parts per million. In fact, this uh, observation of responses below one parts per million is not just restricted to gene expression. An earlier study which looked at white blood cell counts also observed decreasing white blood cells with increasing benzene exposure, particularly at the lower doses below one parts per million. We really need a larger study with, where people are exposed to, at, where people are exposed at a lower dose range, where we can attempt to validate these uh, findings. In conclusion, one, the molecular responses of leukemogens had enough information that allowed us to distinguish a leukemogen from a non-leukemogen carcinogen, albeit imperfectly. We used data adaptive uh, approaches to estimate gene expression-based responses in the leukemia pathway in particular and observed changes at levels below one parts per million. In the future, what are we going to do? All the analysis I showed you so far looked at data on gene expression and blood cell counts. Additional molecular data in terms of microRNAs, um, methylation patterns, adductomics, all could better inform, could potentially better inform the mechanism of benzene toxicity in particular, and more generally help us better characterize leukemogens in general. So in future, 
we plan to do a crossomic analysis, or rather a more true systems biology analysis of benzene exposure. Thank you.